We are in my garage, and I apologize if it's a bit dark. I can't open the garage door because it is really, really windy today, and I'm afraid that you won't be able to hear a single thing that I'm saying. So I've set up some lights, trying to get it as bright as possible, but unfortunately, uh, it's the best we can do today. First thing that we're going to look at are the tools that we're going to be cutting with today. We got ourselves a skill saw, a circular saw. We have ourselves a cordless Dremel, which is one of my favorites, and a metal cutting blade, a pen, two knives, a ruler, and of course, safety glasses and some clamps. First thing that we need to do is cut off the ends of these screws so that our board will sit flush. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the Dremel like this and we're gonna set it to a pretty high speed and we're just gonna cut the screw off and then we are going to flatten it down a little bit to make sure that it's flush with the board. And there we go. Now this metal is hot and this piece is hot, so let it cool for a little bit. And you have a nice flush bottom. I need to do this 14 more times and then we'll move to cutting the edge off the board. It's time to use the circular saw. So the way a circular saw works is you have your cut platform and that is going to need to sit flat down on the board. Right here you have your guide mark. <clears throat> this is where the edge, this edge, the outside edge of your blade is cutting. You just want to keep that straight going down like this. When you start to cut, um, you'll want to look at the guide mark and the blade and make sure that your first cut is exactly where you want it. Then you just switch to this guide mark and you draw a straight line all the way down your board. As you cut, this safety is going to automatically slide back. So when you're lining up your cut, you can pull the safety back and just lay it flush and make sure that you are cutting exactly where you want to cut. It's a pretty straightforward tool. It does require two hands. <clears throat> I am right-handed, this is a right-handed cutting saw, so we are on the right side of the board. This part is hanging over the table. Um, as you can see, we have our clamps in place, and we put a piece of cardboard in between the clamp and the styrofoam so that you don't get a divot. Now, I did this divot so that you could see what happens. I'll get a close-up of that right now, and then we're going to make our cut. Safety glasses on. And there we go, it's as easy as that. What we're going to do is we're gonna cut out this second level. I'm gonna be cutting roughly down this line, this line, and then making this curve, which is going to be kind of a staircase. And then we'll be able to take that piece and put it on top of our terrain before we glue anything together and make sure that we like the look of it. So let's go ahead and cut this piece. The adage is measure twice, cut once, and that's exactly what we're doing. Not cutting your fingers is always a good thing, so when you're using an X-Acto blade, remember to use a metal ruler, preferably one that has cork board on the bottom so that it doesn't slide around. Position it across your line, hold it with your off hand, hold the blade with your dominant hand, and just cut down the line while holding the ruler. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut and be right back. For this round staircase, I'm actually just gonna cut a square around it and then go back in and cut the stairs later. This is actually not a cut here. That is um, our pen line. So we're just gonna go ahead, draw a square there and cut that out. So we are moving on to our box cutter blade, longer than our styrofoam, and we're gonna be doing our final cut straight down this line. Another one, we're gonna turn 90 degrees because we wanna be pulling the blade towards ourselves. Cut down this line. And then our last cut, we're gonna be cutting down this, this line, and that will alleviate our piece from the rest of the board. Ta-da! And there we go, it's coming along nicely. We have our first level built. We have room for our knight to stand. Okay, so we have our piece of styrofoam, and now we're gonna start laying out uh, some of our details that we're gonna carve in. Now, I did cut a new piece of styrofoam because I tested my paint on the other one, so I'm just repeating the exact steps that I did before, but. That's why you notice it doesn't have all the same drawings on it. We are also now in the garage, so I don't have to worry about cutting the table. Now, in this video, you're gonna hear me say something where I say, cut towards you. And I should clarify, when you're cutting straight lines on styrofoam, 
One of the best positions for doing a nice straight line is to keep your wrist straight and to cut this way. But what you're not doing is cutting straight towards your body so that the knife, if it were to slip, would hit your stomach or your leg. You're actually cutting towards you, but slightly off to the side, so that if you do slip, then it, the knife won't strike you. What you don't want to try to do is cut a straight line with your arm crossed over and dragging it around. We have two pieces of detail that we're going to be cutting into this board. One is a step, and we only want this to go about halfway through, and the other is a step and sort of rounded tier. So the first thing that I need to do is trace out um, my different levels. Once again, the cutting tools I'm going to be using here is my adjustable long blade. And we're going to be using this one to come in sideways and cut our tear out. And then we have our standard box cutter blade that we're going to be using for doing all the other patterns. And we're going to start with the easy one, which is going to be our step. So to check the depth of the blade, I'm going to put the blade here. And you're noticing that that is too long. So let's go to our adjustable length blade, and we're just going to bring this down to about right here, which will be half the length of the styrofoam. That way we know we're not going to cut too deep. Okie dokie, we're going to change our blade. It has a score mark, we've got a pair of pliers, and we just snap it off, and now we have a fresh, sharp blade. So for this part, we're going to start with this blade, except we're going to extend it into a longer position. And we're going to start by just getting rid of the extra styrofoam. What we're going to do is we're going to try to do this in sections, starting with the easiest section, and just sort of move our way around. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down another cut here at the same depth as everything else. I'm just going to keep going around like that so we have some smaller chunks to try and work with. And there you have it. We have our levels. The next thing we're gonna do is paint 
But first we're gonna fasten this, fasten this down under the table. The reason why we're not doing any more detailing on the styrofoam is we're gonna put down our base gray, then we're gonna do a pattern overlay, and then we're gonna start sculpting into the pattern so that as we destroy things, it looks like the concrete and the pattern is being broken as you destroy them. So there'll be more sculpting after we paint, and then there'll be more painting after we do some more sculpting. But right now, it's time to fasten this to our board. I wanna get painting right away, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our screws and our Elmer's glue, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sink a whole bunch of screws into here. Now, screws aren't gonna have a lot of force uh, to hold it down, and the styrofoam can pinch under them, which is why we're gonna have to use a lot of screws. But the first thing we're gonna do is smear this with Elmer's glue, We're going to place it. This is the side that's gonna be next to the other board, so I wanna make sure that this side is flush and flush with the back, which is pretty good. Now we're just gonna sink a bunch of screws, being very delicate. There you have it. This is going to hold it down really nice. The screws itself will not keep it secure for a long time, but the glue will by tomorrow, and we can move on and paint. Next time on Cool Guys Nation, we are going to lay the board out, we are gonna paint, we are gonna get the airbrush out, we're gonna start doing a whole bunch of detail work, and then we're gonna do some of our final sculpting into the board, chip it apart, make it look like a ruin. Um, we'll go back and do some detail painting on that, and then it's just a matter of decorating and flocking and putting everything else on it, and you will have yourself a terrain board. So until next time, this has been Aaron from the Cool Guys Nation, and remember, keep playing.